From the Native Americans who populated our region long before the Mayflower made landfall, to 21st century role models of all faiths, races, gender identity, and ethnicity, women have toiled to improve their lives in a struggle that dates back centuries. In 1776, the year our nation was formed, Massachusetts' own Abigail Adams wrote to her husband, the then future president, John Adams. I desire you would remember the ladies and be more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors. Do not put such unlimited power into the hands of the husbands. Remember, all men would be tyrants if they could. If particular care and attention is not paid to the ladies, we are determined to foment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves bound by any laws in which we have no voice or representation. Abigail's desire was not achieved for another 144 years of political activism for all American women to have the right to vote. The importance of women's education could not be overstated. Knowledge is power, and what started as an unequal balance between the education of men and women has now had the tables turned. Since the 1970s, women have accounted for more college degrees than men, and women of color are finally seeing more opportunities. Our region has many women heroes who have made and continue to make great strides in women's education. Women from our region stepped forward in leadership roles during our nation's greatest test. The long fight to end slavery culminated in the Civil War. Abolitionists Sojourner Truth and Sarah Lawrence Robinson, along with nurses Clara Barton and Dorothea Dix, played leading roles during the era of the Civil War. Many women from our region gathered to make bandages and clothing for the troops, while others filled the void left by military-aged men in local industries. Our region has been especially rich in women who have put pens to paper or fingertips to keyboards for centuries. While living as a slave in Deerfield, Lucy Terry Prince, at the age of 21, wrote one of America's first poems during the French and Indian War. Here, Emily Dickinson gazed out upon Amherst in the 1800s and was inspired to write poetry that continues to affect and inspire readers the world over. A champion of the women's suffrage movement, Minnie Dwight served as publisher and editor of the Hoyoke Transcript for almost 30 years. Hoyoke is the home of Leslie Newman, author of 70 books for readers of all ages, among them the landmark children's book, Heather Has Two Mommies. Anita Shreve wrote many of her earlier works while living in Longmeadow. Suzanne Strempick Shea of Bondsville has mastered many forms of the craft, from journalism, essays and short stories, to novels and nonfiction work. The list continues to the delight of readers everywhere. Truly, there is a treasure trove of locally written works by women of note spanning the centuries. The Industrial Revolution, which began in the Connecticut River Valley, required thousands of mill workers, the majority of whom were women. Native-born women workers were soon joined by waves of new immigrants from Canada and Europe. In the late 19th century, a number of women from our region began their own business enterprises. They became models for successive generations of businesswomen and women in male-dominated professions. In the 20th century, during World War I and World War II, women answered the call of duty by joining the factory workforce in places like the Springfield Armory. The post-war years witnessed the decades-long struggle to achieve equality in the workforce, a struggle that continues today. In the 21st century, our region is fortunate to have a significant number of remarkable women business leaders. For many women in the military, during the War of 1812, the Civil War, and the Spanish-American War, work would center on service as nurses. Others would be spies, and many would serve in support roles. It was not until World War I that women were formally allowed to join the U.S. Armed Forces, with more than 30,000 serving as nurses and support staff to the U.S. military. The number of American women serving in the military grew exponentially during World War II, with nearly 350,000 women in uniform serving from 1941 through 1945. In every military conflict since, from Korea to Vietnam to the Persian Gulf, and today on active duty in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, women serve in every branch of the military. Gazing through microscopes and telescopes, women have participated in humanity's quest to explain the universe. 
As astronauts, women from our region have bravely explored outer space and have broken the ultimate glass ceiling. It is because of their spirit and thirst to compete that pioneers of women's sports, such as Senda Berenson at Smith College, have paved the road for today's women to enjoy the level of competition and achievement that defines the modern arena of competitive sport. The arena of sport allowed women to be strong, powerful, and taught them not to be afraid of life's battles. It is an important reminder that when girls and women engage in play, they use the creativity of their minds for imagination and invention, and they develop the rudimentary skills of negotiation and governance. They begin to lay the foundation to become the leaders of their own future. From the mid-1800s to today, women composers, performers, and music educators have played an important role in the cultural life of this region. These women run the gamut from concert singers in the 19th century to popular music entertainers in the 20th and 21st centuries. Not confined to regional success, many of these women were well-traveled both in the United States and abroad. It is also amazing how many women from Western and Central Massachusetts have graced the professional stage and entertained the nation through radio, television, and film performances since the 19th century. From Eva Tangway of Holyoke, who became the queen of vaudeville, to silent film actress Carol Holloway of Williamstown, who appeared in 117 silent films, to Eleanor Powell of Springfield, who acted and danced her way to Hollywood fame in the 1930s, to Pittsfield's Elizabeth Banks. Of today's most popular Hollywood films, our region has produced some of the nation's most famous actresses and entertainers. Two extremely talented African-American women from Springfield broke down barriers to rise to the very top of their fields. Cheryl Boone Isaacs, 35th president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, and Ruth E. Carter, Oscar-winning costume designer for film and television with over 40 films to her credit. In a region known for its innovators and trailblazers, it's not surprising to find that same entrepreneurial spirit in the region's philanthropic women. As a result of their efforts, you can find museums, colleges, preschools, historic homes, and an internationally known music festival, all started by women. These women voluntarily gave their time, energy, and expertise, as well as their financial resources, to pursue a vision of a brighter, healthier, more vibrant community. 2018 is considered the year of the woman in politics, local, statewide, and national, with a record number of female candidates running for elective office. While Americans were debating the rights of women throughout most of U.S. history, individual women from Western and Central Massachusetts were working hard to improve the lives and fortunes of their gender, their families, and themselves. They instigated and nurtured a long and rich tradition of participation that shaped the public world and their private lives through politics, law, and government service. Women from our region broke records, from being the first woman to register to vote in Springfield, the first woman police chief in New England, to the first woman to be elected as governor of any state in the nation without following her husband into the office. It took 92 years from the time women gained the right to vote to see a woman from Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren, elected to the U.S. Senate in 2012. The first in a series of national women's rights conventions was held in Worcester, Massachusetts on October 23rd and 24th in 1850 at the initiative of Lucy Stone and Paulina Wright Davis. Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton met the following year in 1851. Their decades-long collaboration was pivotal for the suffrage movement and contributed significantly to the broader struggle for women's rights, which Stanton called the greatest revolution the world has ever known or ever will know. The fight continues today, where hundreds of thousands have taken to the streets for equality in pay and for protection from harassment. The Power of Women book records a journey that is far from over. We hope we have provided a history and a presence that bring us to today. But there is so much more to do, many battles to fight for economic and power parity. The path that has led us to today is paved by women who have risked everything to make a difference. They have lit that path to the future. Welcome to all those who travel down that path. <laughs>